Hey, welcome everybody. It's nice to have you here. Um, so today I would like to share with you about something that I see that blocks a lot of people. Uh, I, I think it's really important because number one, this is something that, as I say, it blocks a lot of people from manifesting what they want to manifest and experiencing the satisfaction of that. And the second thing is um, that this is a major cause of anxiety. Uh, and so when you understand this, that this can resolve a lot of things that are holding a lot of people back in their lives. Um, <clears throat> so the, the thing about this is that it is, uh, I guess you could say a paradox because a lot of the time what's going on is that people are uh, doing this thing that they feel compelled to do because they think that this is actually somehow going to help them. And uh, so they get stuck because they don't know that this is the thing that's really getting in the way. Um, or I should say, really, it's more like they don't know that not doing this is is what's getting in the way. Uh, they think that this is uh, um, well, it will make more sense if I just tell you what it is. I, I was going to try to maintain some suspense, but it will be easier if I just tell you what it is. So the thing is this, it's acceptance. Um, acceptance is is one of those things that a lot of people think that, uh, oh, that sounds nice, but it couldn't really help me. It's not really that important. Uh, and so they said they focus on chasing after the, the next flashy thing. They think that if they go after the, you know, the next technique or the next this or the next that, then that's somehow going to help them. And they overlook acceptance. Uh, they really devalue acceptance, but acceptance is super, super important. And uh, if you don't understand this and you don't practice it, then you really cannot expect to get the kinds of results that you really want to get in your life. Um, so I wanted to take a little bit of time to explore this in a little bit more detail <clears throat> um, and hopefully uh, convince you, persuade you uh, of its importance. Because as I say, if you don't take this to heart, then you can waste a lot of time and energy in your life and not get the results that you want. In fact, you'll just end up very frustrated um, and anxious and maybe, you know, angry and disappointed and discouraged and all those kinds of things. So this can save you an enormous amount of stress and worry and uh, frustration in your life. So <clears throat> um, <clears throat> acceptance is actually such a, it's such a, uh, an important topic and it's very broad um, and deep. And so I can't really cover uh, all but the, the tiniest amount in this talk today. But, uh, and I'm mentioning that just because I want you to understand that you could give attention to this and grow this in your life and it would continue to uh, to pay dividends in your life forever. It's so important. Um, it's so rich. So please understand that what I'm going to be able to share with you today is just scratching the surface. And I do encourage you to really continue to take this and run with it in your life because it will be enormously valuable. <clears throat> there are many dimensions to acceptance. So uh, I also encourage you to, to keep exploring it with that in mind, because if you keep it kind of one dimensional, then you won't be getting the full value of it. And again, necessarily because it's such a broad topic, I can only really talk about one or maybe two dimensions of it today. Um, so let's take a look at it in, in a couple of different contexts and they all really go together, but let's look at it first in terms of manifestation. So you want to manifest things in your life. Well, first of all, let me take a step back because sometimes I have to make sure that people understand that it's good and important to manifest things in your life. In fact, you can't help but manifest things in your life. So uh, if you don't do it consciously, then you're making things very difficult for yourself. What can sometimes happen is that people get this idea that they should not manifest things in their life, and that makes it even more difficult. So it's it's so some people realize they want to manifest things, um, and they're okay with that, but then they are clueless about how to do that effectively. And then there are people who think they get this idea that they should not manifest things in their life. And that's just like a spiritual constipation. So don't do that to yourself. If you've already done that to yourself, then uh, start to liberate yourself from that idea. So this whole life is uh, based upon desire and you're not going to get out of it by trying to deny that you have desire. That won't work. 
uh, if you have desire, then you have desire and uh, denying it is just deny. So uh, acknowledge that you have desires and, and acknowledge that fulfilling your true desires is useful. It's skillful to do because if you don't, uh, then what's going to happen is think about this. You get to the end of your life, you haven't fulfilled desires and then you just have regret. Where does your attention go in the last moment to the regret of the unfulfilled desires and guess what's going to happen? Come back around again. So better is to put your attention on the things that you actually want to fulfill now, sooner rather than later, so that you can satisfy that stuff so that you can, uh, you know, not be burdened by that any longer. So it's not that I'm glorifying desire in and of itself to say, keep, keep on heaping on the desire. That's not the point here. What I am saying is that you have desire. So being honest about that is skillful. And that will help you in your life. It will help you to progress. It will help you to experience more peace, more satisfaction, more happiness, and, and so forth. So having desire is um, is just part and parcel of what it is to be here. Uh, you have desire, so acknowledge that. And then you want to let go of the desires that are not actually yours. Because a lot of the time people are trying to, they're wasting their time and energy trying to satisfy other people's desires. Like they want to satisfy their parents' desires, their spouse's desires, their children's desires, their neighbor's desires, their teacher's desires, and so so forth and so on. Um, and so you want to wake up to that. You want to let go of those things which are not actually yours. And then you want to actually put your attention on those desires that are actually yours and satisfy those. You want to fulfill those because as I've already suggested, if you don't, then you're kind of just wasting your time. I mean, if if you're still here in this world, which you are, because you're using internet technology, then you're caught up in all this stuff. So you want to become conscious and you want to actually direct your consciousness as satisfying the purposes of this lifetime for you. Otherwise it's a waste. So identify what are your actual desires and then satisfy them. And in many videos, I've, I've shared a lot of the fundamental uh, principles that you want to be aware of so that you can do that skillfully. Just as a brief review, I'm talking about understanding things like the law of attention. Uh, the law of attention is just that whatever you put your attention on, that's where the energy goes. So you're creating through the law of attention all the time, consciously or unconsciously. So you want to become conscious of that so that you can do it more consciously. Um, so those are some fundamental things. Um, you know, so putting law of attention, keeping your attention on what you want, gaining increasing clarity about what it is that you want. Actually, let me just take a moment to clarify this a little bit because I know that some people do get confused about this and it's worth reviewing just so that people have this understanding. So when I say to put your attention on what you want, uh, then sometimes, and understandably, people don't understand what it is that what exactly it is that I'm saying. So I'm not saying that you have to do some kind of extraordinary feat of visualization beyond what it is that you already naturally do. Sometimes people get confused and they think, well, do I have to develop this skill of visualization beyond what it is or, that I already naturally do? No, you don't. Might that be useful? Possibly, but it's certainly not necessary because guess what? You're already manifesting your life using the skills that you've already developed according, uh, according to whatever uh, capacity you have. So you already are capable of manifesting using those faculties just as they are. You don't have to do something extraordinary there. You just have to start to use them consciously. So you want to become aware of how it is you already use those faculties. That's all. You don't have to do something extraordinary. Just notice how you're already using them. And then you start to use them consciously. So when you put your attention on something that you want, on your desire, then just do that in the way that you would imagine something that you you know that you're going to do later on today, right? So if you know later on today, you're going to brush your teeth or you're going to eat dinner or you're going to do whatever thing you're going to do, just notice how you can naturally, virtually effortlessly imagine that now. And it's not some extraordinary thing. It's something that comes naturally to you. You already do it. You want to be able to do the same thing consciously with those true desires that you have, whatever those might be, whether that's finances, relationship, health, or whatever it might be. So you just want to be able to put your attention and keep your attention on those things that you actually desire. When you do that, then what will start to be revealed to you is 
how it is that you do that in a way that does not feel completely natural to you. That's what you want to start to notice because you want to start to clear away those things that you do that make it seem unnatural so that you can allow it to be natural. So notice if you think about the thing that you know that you're going to do later today, it feels totally natural. There's no strain. There's no effort. There's no stress. It's just you're like, yeah, I'm going to do that thing. Easy peasy. Then think about something that you would like to accomplish in your life, whatever that is the health thing, the relationship thing, the money thing, whatever it is. And notice how that's different. Notice how you make that complicated for yourself. You make it stressful, strenuous. You tell yourself, oh, I can't do it. It's, it's too difficult. I can't even imagine it. I don't even know what that would look like. It won't work for me. On and on and on. You make it difficult and strenuous. So that's what you want to start to notice. And then you can start to release that stuff so that you don't make it so difficult. You want it to be natural and easy, just like the other things that you know for sure you're going to do. So that's the, those are the basics. Uh, obviously, that's an oversimplification. I'm not giving a lot of detail there because that would be a much longer talk, but I just want to cover at least those basics so people, we can all be on the same page here. Now, when you do that, and I do encourage you to do that consistently daily with the things that are most important to you. So again, just put your attention on what it is you want. Identify the top one, two, three things that you actually want in your life. It doesn't have to be the top big three things. It could be, but it could also just be the top priority three things now that you want. And put your attention on those things daily. Notice how you make that difficult and strenuous. Notice the limiting beliefs, write it all down, release that stuff. Okay. So you're going to be doing that every day. And I understand that's an oversimplification, but you can work with at least that. Now, when you do that, what's going to happen is that in your life, there are going to be things that will happen that run contrary to what it is that you want, or at least on the surface, it will seem like it's contrary to what you want. Right, So you might have a goal, a financial goal. You say, I want uh, my goal, I, I, my goal is to have a million dollars. Okay, So you, you start to imagine, I have a million dollars, You know, I got the million dollars in the bank, and you notice all the limiting beliefs and all the ways you make that difficult, and you start to release that stuff. So it becomes easier and more natural. So eventually, you might get to the point where you start to feel like, oh, yeah, it starts to feel like, yeah, that's, that's true, it's natural, I have the million dollars, which is a good sign. But then what happens is people will, will report, well, but instead of having the million dollars on the outside, now I'm, I have, I've got new debt, you know, like I just got hit with this new debt. And so then they start to have resistance to that. They start to feel all kinds of unpleasant stuff in, in response to that. They feel fearful, angry, resentful. You know, they're blaming others. They're saying, well, it's this person's fault. It's that agency's fault. It's this, you know, it's my parents' fault. It's the government's fault. It's whoever's fault. They're looking you know, so upset about this. It's not fair. And it's Joey's fault because he said this was going to work and it's not working. So here's where acceptance becomes very, very, very important. And this is uh, something that a lot of people don't understand at first because their understanding of they they have they have an understanding of the law of attention, but it's somewhat superficial. So the understanding it's an appropriate understanding of the law of attention, which is that the law of attention is whatever you put your attention on, that's what grows. So they think, well, I sh if I'm putting my attention on the million dollars, then I definitely, that should be growing and I should definitely not have debt because debt runs contrary to the million dollars. However, still it's superficial and I'm going to clarify that here. So number one is understand what that kind of superficial understanding causes people to overlook is that as soon as they are, are shown something like debt or whatever it is that runs contrary to what they want, they're putting their attention on that and missing out on the fact that they're using the law of attention to now grow the thing that they don't want. 
So this is why acceptance is so important, because if you're resisting it, you're putting your attention on it and growing it. It's not going to help to continue to resist the thing that you don't want. Uh, so that's one thing. And then the other thing is, let's see if I can remember what I was going to say there. Um, cause I said there were two things, what was the other thing I was going to say? It's two things Two. Oh, the other thing is this. Um, so if, so a lot of the time, um, we don't have eyes to see, we don't know what's going on behind the scenes. So, uh, like I, I've used this metaphor before of a house and the furniture. So uh, the house is like your life and the furniture is what you're manifesting in your life. So you've already got the furniture in your house. You've already got the stuff that you've manifested in your life. You've already got all that stuff there. Now you say, I want to change it. So I want to put new furniture in my house. Instead of having the old, the old way, I want the new way. So in my imagination, I'm imagining all the new furniture and, you know, behind the scenes, all the, the new furniture is being manufactured and, now it's being brought to my house. Well, it's not going to work for me to just try to shove in the new furniture because I've got all the old furniture in there. So I now need to remove the old furniture before I can move in the new furniture. So this is kind of what's happening in these situations where you've, you've, you're you know imagining I have the million dollars. I feel comfortable with a million dollars. It's natural to have a million dollars. It's totally me to have a million dollars. Every day I have a million dollars. It's fantastic having a million dollars. I'm doing wonderful things with a million dollars. And it starts to feel very natural and real. Now it's basically like that furniture is there outside the house. Now you're presented with, well, I've got existing furniture. The existing furniture is the debt. And even though it might show up as new debt, it might show up as whatever. It's like, this is this is the old furniture now calling for your attention so that you can allow it to be moved out. It's like the movers are there and they're like, gee, boss, what do you want us to do with this old furniture? And when you resist it, you're like, don't move the furniture out. Keep it there. It's important to me. I love that old furniture. I need it there. Well, then what do you get? Can I, what do you expect? You've just given the order. Keep the old furniture. I want that old way. I want the old consciousness. I don't want anything to change. So you're just working against yourself in that situation. So the acceptance is basically like, again, imagine the movers are there and they're presenting you with the furniture and they're like, you want us to move this out? And the acceptance is yes, go ahead and move that out so that the new, mo the, the new furniture can move in. That would be the best thing that you could do. Don't don't abuse or misunderstand the principles and use them against yourself. So you want to accept as a way of allowing the continuation of what you've already set into motion. Um, so another, some other information that can be helpful in understanding this. So there's also a law, which is the law of cause and effect. And so everything has every, thing that exists has a cause or causes. It's a chain of causes. And uh, this is like all the laws. This can be understood on many levels. So just keep that in mind. Um, but through the lens of time, it can be understood that causes exist in the past. And so if we view it from that lens of the lens of time, then it's helpful to understand that whatever it is that you're experiencing now in your outer world, is the result of past causes. So if the debt shows up now, it's it didn't just happen out of nowhere. It happened as a result of past causes. So where why are you going to waste your energy fighting with the thing that's just showing up as a result of past causes? It's like you ordered the pizza and the pizza delivery guy is showing up with the pizza. Why are you going to be upset with the pizza delivery guy? Pizza delivery guy is just doing his job. You ordered the pizza. So in the past, you ordered up whatever it is that's happening now. Don't waste your time and energy fighting with that. Just accept it. Just say that, in fact, this can be very, very useful and skillful. You just say, okay, look, that's interesting. I hadn't previously realized that I had done this, but now that it's here, I can take a look and see how did I produce this? What did I do to order this? because I don't want to keep repeating that. 
right? If I have not already made those changes to release that stuff, I want to, I want to do that now. I want to release that stuff now. So fighting with it, resisting it, getting upset and frustrated about it does not open me up and allow me to understand and learn. Instead, it just keeps the same thing stuck. So acceptance is very, very, very important. It's the gateway that opens everything for you. So you want to step through that. Um, the other lens that you can understand cause and effect through, I mean, I'm sure there are many, but another important lens is the lens of, uh, uh, of inner and outer. So the outer is always the effect and the inner is the cause. So whatever it is that's happening outside, don't waste your time fighting with that. Absolutely a waste. Don't do that. So you want to always keep move your attention to the inside because the inside is the cause. So if on the outside, the debt shows up, then just accept it. Just say, this is the natural consequence of whatever that cause is. So the cause, again, can be understood through the lens of time, saying that it's a past cause. It can also be understood through the lens of inner and outer and just understand that it's an inner cause. So what is it that I'm holding inwardly in consciousness that is producing this so that I can release that. I'm not going to waste my time fighting with the thing that's showing up as an effect on the outside. Instead, I want to turn inside and notice what is it that I'm doing inwardly in consciousness that produces this effect. So uh, that's, that's the most important thing there. Okay, so if you want to manifest things successfully in your life, do yourself a big favor and understand how important this is. Don't fight with anything that's showing up outside. Across the board, as a blanket statement, don't fight with the things that are happening outside. If you want the changes, make the changes inside. And have patience and know that things will happen on the outside in the appropriate times. Oh, well, I'll say one more thing about that. And this also has to do with not having eyes to see. So you... You, we might think uh, that whatever's happening on the outside doesn't make any sense in terms of what it is that we're wanting. Okay, It might seem contrary. But again, if you think about it in terms of this idea of like house, house cleaning, okay, so you want to do, you want to get rid of the, the old and replace it with the new, then in part of that process, whatever it is that's there, that already has been created, that's existing at, at, at the outer level, needs to be cleaned away. So you might not previously have had have seen all of that. You didn't have that level of consciousness to recognize it. But the thing, the amazing thing is that through the, the process, through the work that you do, that's done for you. Okay, so you, all you have to do is continue to work with the basic things. Keep putting your attention on what you want. Get clearer and clearer about that. So that it becomes natural, effortless, non-strenuous, so that you have complete acceptance of it. Keep releasing anything that interferes with that. If you keep working with that, then whatever happens on the outside, you can know and trust and have faith that that's just a natural consequence of the work, the inner work that you're doing, and that there's just a progression that needs to occur for it, you, you, for your desired outcome to manifest. Things just need to move and happen. And if you interfere and you resist, then you just muck it up. You're, you know, it's like, think about, you know, like sort of like um, a child who wants something, but they don't understand how that works, right? So the the, the adult maybe has the the understanding of how the thing works. So the child wants the chocolate, and the and the adult says, "Okay, let's get in the car." And the child's like, "No, I want chocolate. I'm upset with you. What do you mean, get into the car? I want the chocolate." And the adult is thinking, yes, but I have chocolate here. We have to go to the store where they have the chocolate so that we can get chocolate. I'm going to get the chocolate for you. But the child is upset because they're thinking, I don't want to go in the car. I want the chocolate. So you just don't necessarily have eyes to see. 
what is necessary in order to produce what it is that you want. You just don't know all of the intricacies of what it is that you've created because you're largely unconscious of it. But you can trust in that process, or I should say, if you trust in that process, then it's the most efficient means for you to get the desired outcome. So again, acceptance is key for that. Now, the the next thing, the next piece here is, and this is interrelated, but this has to do with um, the, uh, like I was saying, anxiety. So, so the other thing that happens with resistance and where acceptance is key is when it comes to anxiety and all other kinds of things related to that. So it's not just anxiety. I mean, to be honest, it's all the negative states, but anxiety is probably the most prominent one that people struggle with. So, um, What's happening is, but you know, I, I don't know how to, let me just clarify that. So it's anxiety, frustration, anger, fear, sadness, you know, all these things when you're indulged, um, what's really happening is there's a resistance, a non-acceptance and acceptance turns out to be the key ingredient that can, uh, change all that. So it's the acceptance is key to transforming the relationship with all of these things. People otherwise will struggle unnecessarily for years and decades and whole lifetimes with these things. And the key that changes that is acceptance. But I'll look at it just using the lens of anxiety, but this will um, translate over to all the other things as well. But just to keep it as focused, I'll just talk about anxiety. So if you think about anxiety... Um, then, you know, a lot of people, they say they're, they say they experience anxiety, um, but they don't really take a look to see what is that actually, what are we really talking about? You know, so it's because anxiety, and this is true of all experience. If you just give it a name and then you walk around and you say, I have this problem, then it's not usually going to help you. You want to actually find out what is the actual experience. So if you look and find out what is the actual experience that you call anxiety or anger or fear or whatever, um, that's much more useful. So if we look and find out what is the actual experience of anxiety, then what you will find if you look for yourself to see what that experience is, is that it is uh, when you have a preference and you don't, but you don't have uh, confidence that you can guarantee that preference. And so you feel powerless, but you are resisting that. Okay. So let's say, um, I, I, uh, really, I, I have a preference that everybody will approve of me. But I don't get to choose whether everybody's going to approve of me. I don't have that power. Other people might not approve of me. And I know that. I know that other people might not approve of me. So now I'm in a situation where I have a preference, but I don't feel that I'm empowered to ensure that I can get that preference met. Now, uh, as long as I resist that, that is called anxiety. Okay, so I'm saying from the one hand, I need other people to approve of me. And I acknowledge that I don't seem to have the power to guarantee that other people will always approve of me. And I resist this. That's anxiety. So this is why the remedy for that is acceptance. And I'll talk you through a process that you can use for this. So you think about something that where you experience anxiety. Uh, and if you don't, ex if you don't experience anxiety, you can think about this, like I said, will also work for, for, um, anger or, uh, maybe even depression. I hadn't thought about that one, but it could work with a lot of different things, but I'll, I'll talk through it with anxiety. So think about something where you experience anxiety and then think about <clears throat> what is it that you're, what is your preference? So you have a preference. And then notice that you also acknowledge on some level that you don't have 
certainty that you can get that reference met. You don't feel that you're empowered to ensure that that will be the outcome. Now, notice that for you to experience anxiety, you have to resist that you have to resist that. You have to resist. So one way that you can help yourself with this then is to acknowledge that you have the preference. Okay, so the example that I gave is I, I prefer that other people approve of me. Then the question is, are you willing to accept other people not approving of you. Okay. Because as long as you're not willing to accept it, you're going to be stuck with the anxiety. So ask yourself, are you willing to accept that other people might not approve of you? Then you can take this even further. Well, before we go there, just see if you can actually get to that point. Are you willing to accept that other people might not approve of you? And if you, um, you might notice that, um, there's actually another layer to this. So we usually project that it's some outer thing. So, um, you know, the concern is that other people might not approve of me. That's the outer thing. Other people might not approve of me, but then what is that to me? Why do I care about other people might not approve of me? It's actually because I'm concerned that I might feel something that I don't want to feel, right? So then there's actually another another layer of preference. I prefer not to feel the discomfort that I imagine I might feel if other people don't approve of me. I mean, it's even more, there's even another layer in there. So I'm, 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 I would prefer not to feel the discomfort that I imagine I would feel if I was thinking that other people were not approving of me, right? Because I don't really know if other people approve of me or not unless they tell me. But that's a preference that I have. So then if I'm in resistance to that, if I'm in resistance to feeling that discomfort, I have anxiety. I really don't want to feel that feeling of discomfort. And as long as I'm resisting that, I'm going to have anxiety. So then I can ask myself, am I willing to accept having the feeling of discomfort? And somebody's asking, what is the experience of acceptance? It, so acceptance is, you could say, simply a willingness and openness to the possibility of something. Just saying, okay, this, this exists or it could exist. could also say it's the absence of the resistance. So the resistance, you could notice, you could imagine, I mean, you could actually push your hands against one another, feel the resistance of that, you know, so you can feel what that is, and then you can stop doing that. <laughs> so are you willing to accept... the possibility of feeling whatever you would prefer not to feel, you know, because it might happen. So are you, are you willing to accept that possibility? Uh, now, if you're willing to do just that much, this can stop the anxiety. But like I said, you can take it even a step further. You could choose that feeling. Because uh, choosing is is empowered i mean it's empowered to be willing but if you choose it's another level of empowerment so you could ask yourself if you if you're willing to choose that feeling and you could in your imagination this is the amazing thing is in even when you just it's a trick because even if you just uh imagine 
being willing to choose. Even if you just entertain that as a possibility, even if you don't choose it, but you just imagine the possibility of choosing it, you're still actually in that moment choosing it. Because you have to, in order to do that, you have to actually feel it. You have to choose that in that moment. So you can uh, you can do that now just by entertaining that possibility. And then the more that you're willing to entertain that possibility, then uh, you, you don't have to, it stops the anxiety. You don't have to have any anxiety. Of course, you could choose again to be in resistance. I mean, I'm not going to take that away from you. you. You still have that possibility. You could go back to choosing the resistance. But the point here is just that you can realize that you have other options available to you and you can experience that directly. And once you experience that directly, then hopefully you realize that that's much better. It's much better to choose the, the, uh, the unwanted feeling, the unwanted experience that is to experience anxiety in anticipation of the possibility that it might happen. And, and then uh, sometimes people then st will, will, again, this, from a superficial uh, understanding of the law of uh, attention, will raise concerns about this. They'll say, well, but wait a second. If I'm choosing the unwanted feeling, then am I not putting my attention on the unwanted feeling? Is that going to cause it to grow in my experience? Well, actually, um, in practice, no, because w once you've once you've chosen it, once you've accepted it and chosen it, then... Why, why are you going to keep putting your attention on it? You won't. You're putting your attention on it over and over and over and over and over and over and over as long as you're resisting. As long as you're resisting, there it is. And you just can't help but put your attention on it. You're trying not to, but you can't help but put your attention on it because you're resisting it. But as soon as you're willing to accept it and choose it, then it's like, oh, okay. No big deal. And then you don't have to keep putting your attention on it. So uh, continuing to resist is what makes the thing uh, problematic. That it, it activates the law of attention, put, putting your attention on what you don't want. So with all these things, you just want to be aware of what's actually going on. A lot of the time, what happens is people are caught up in... Uh, thinking about things instead of actually just noticing what's really going on. And there's an, a world of difference between thinking about things and actually just experiencing directly. Um, because you, it's amazing the, the kind of delusion that we can suffer from when we are thinking about things rather than just noticing what's actually going on. Because you can think and think and think and think and overlook exactly what's going on. Uh, but if you just notice what's actually going on, you'll get so much clarity because then all these things will become clear to you. Obviously it's clear. Um, but that's the main, that's mainly what I wanted to share today. So just to, um, to recap, well, let me just see, there's a question. What about things with the actual physical impact? It's, an, it's, it's a, it's a great question. So, um, the, the, so if you notice the physical, physical impact, I mean, I don't know exactly what you're talking about specifically, but, um, the let's start with the physical body and your experiences of the physical body. So uh, that is all entirely uh, re responsive to what it is that you're holding in consciousness. So if you're resisting, then you're going to have resistance in the physical body. And uh, so, so the, the acceptance is going to allow flow which is the natural state of all matter, all substance. Its natural state is flow. So if you're holding resistance, then that's going to manifest as all kinds of dysfunction and pain and discomfort at a physical level. So if you want to uh, experience greater physical ease, uh, then acceptance is really important. Um, I mean, this is... It, it, this, this, like I said, this, this topic of acceptance is so broad and deep. You, I really do encourage you to explore it for, uh, 
for the rest of your life because it can serve you. Um, so it, it touches on every aspect of your life. It touches on your physical health. It touches on your relationships. It touches on your creative expression, your finances, spiritual growth. Everything is um, is influenced by this very profoundly. So if you are in resistance, then you're you're going contrary to fundamental uh, principles in nature. Like I said, in nature, flow is uh, of of great importance. So if you anything that you want enhanced in your life, you want flow, unless you want to destroy everything. If you want to destroy everything, then resistance would be a great way to do that. Um, but if you if you want if you don't want just total destruction, then I do recommend enhancing accept your practice of acceptance because it will enhance every, all the positive qualities that you want in your life. I mean, if you think about um, what are the states that most people prefer and desire, harmony, love, peace, happiness, joy, abundance, these all uh, are, are um, intimately connected with flow. You really can't experience those things without flow. So flow is flow is another way of saying acceptance. So acceptance enhances all the qualities that we want in our lives. Uh, that's how important it is. It's how how big of an influence it has. So it really can touch every area of your life the more that you practice it. I guess I'll just say one more thing about it because I know that a lot of people still have concerns about it. They're very fearful that if they uh, accept then they're going to get more of the things that they don't want in their life. But it's really the opposite of that. I mean, just check it out in your life and see how true that is. When you have been resisting and what you have been resisting in your life, how how well has it worked out for you? And I'm pretty sure that if you're honest, you can acknowledge that the resistance does not give you good results. It does not give you what you want. It does not enhance the qualities that you want in your life. Instead, it enhances all the things that you don't want. It makes you feel tense and uptight and uh, it creates pain and distress and, and uh, destroys relationships, creates mistrust, uh, you know, lands you in financial ruin, all kinds of things. So the, um, it's just one of those, like I said, it's a paradox because at least it's a, an apparent paradox because most people believe that resistance is necessary. The struggle is necessary in order to achieve what they want, but it really is not true. So it, it requires, I guess, a little bit of, uh, courage and faith in order to practice it, but you don't have to do it wholesale on a big scale all at once you could do it just a little bit and just see what happens if you start to practice a little bit just in your imagination you'll start to notice that things are are, are flowing better in your life and you'll get enhanced results you'll start to notice that uh you're able to manifest the things that you want with greater ease and with greater uh certainty and reliability and certainly you'll notice that you experience more positive states because you're not keeping yourself stuck in all of those unwanted states. I see somebody asking resistance to what? Resistance, period. I mean, resistance. It's it, and, any, yeah, resistance to what's happened. Resistance. Resistance to your experience. Resistance to what's happening. Resistance to what's showing up. Resistance, period. Any kind of resistance. Uh, it's not necessary. So... Um, the more that you practice acceptance and the more you explore acceptance, then it it's really one of the most useful skills that will uh, serve you very well in so many ways. Question is, do I have an exercise to share to help us to accept it when we witness hold on, resistance? Well, just notice how it, notice so notice how it feels. So everything kind of always comes back down to awareness. Awareness is key. Uh, this is why it's it's the in in the manifesting truth program, which is the main program that I offer. Uh, the primary practice that we do is a practice that enhances awareness, because awareness is the 
key to success in general. You can't do anything if you're not aware. You have to be aware before you can make any change. If you don't notice that there's resistance, then you're not going to be able to change that. Uh, so the first thing is to just be aware. So you can practice being aware. Just check in and notice what you're actually experiencing directly throughout the day. You can, um, when you want to establish a new habit, it's really helpful to, um, to track that. And if you want to track it, then you want to do it at the, on a, on a, on a schedule. Okay. So you want to know like at least daily, you want to track whether you've done it daily. So you want to just set aside at least one time every day just to check in and notice what is your actual direct experience. Most people are just so caught up in the mind, thinking, 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 thinking all the time. And so um, it's very helpful just to pause and actually just check in and notice what's actually happening directly. And so you can just notice uh, what are you actually feeling right now? What do you? What is your actual direct experience right now? Not what are you thinking about it, not what are your judgments about it, not whether you like it or not, or whether it's good or bad. Just notice what is it that's actually happening directly. So you could notice the sensations that are happening, the location of those sensations, the quality of those sensations. You could just notice those things without the judgments. Uh, and then you want to notice whether what you're experiencing is uh, what we could call resistance. So is there a sense of hardness? Is there a sense of uh, uh, unnecessary tension? Is there a sense of strain? Is there a overthinking going on? Tendency towards overthinking. Because re resistance is another way of saying trying to solve a problem. And the, the uh, analytical mind's job is solving problems. So if most of most most people are just trying to solve problems most of the time. That's why their minds are going, 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 going. It's all about solving problems. So you want to just notice, okay, if that's going on, that's a resistance. So just give yourself permission just for a moment just to soften that. You know, like I said, don't try to bite off more than you can chew. Don't insist that you have to completely accept everything always at all levels that might come in time but just to start with could you give yourself a second like for one second could you just soften a little bit could you just slow down a little bit could you just let go of the fixation just for a moment could you allow yourself just to relax a little bit and it's not about getting rid of anything it's just allowing just softening opening don't worry about whether anything changes according to how you think it should change. It's just about for a moment, just softening and releasing a little bit to whatever degree you can. Um, that would be the number one thing. And I know that's, yeah, <laughs> I know most people are going to say, well, that's not, that's not going to do it. That's not big enough or flashy enough or important sounding enough or uh, you know, it doesn't have enough steps or an acronym or it's not, you know, science backed or whatever, you know, well, okay. So then you won't do it and then you won't get the results. But the thing is, the answers, the true answers to things are actually simple. And so if you just were to do that consistently, you would get results. Even if you just did it once a day, and I know that sounds maybe incredible, um, uh, but if you just did that once a day, over time, it would really start to add up. Why? Because then you would start to grow this underlying awareness. You would start to have that awareness more and more throughout the day where it just be there for you. And you just start to notice, oh yeah, there's that resistance. Oh yeah, there's the possibility of just softening. And the more that that happens, then it starts to be there for you all the time. And it's not necessarily going to be like a magic switch and everything suddenly is just all, you know, rainbows and roses. But if you continue to persist with that day after day after day in a gentle way that's sustainable, then the results are real. It's undeniable for anybody who does it. Of course, I know, and you probably know that 99% of people won't do it. And that's why most people won't get the results. And they can point and say, well, 
I'm not getting the results because of this and that and the other reason. The only reason people don't get the results is because they don't apply the things. If you just keep it simple, gentle, sustainable, consistent, you will get the results because it's like, uh, it's just a practice. Anything that you practice, you'll get better at. Just be aware of what it is you're practicing. So if you're practicing resistance, you'll get really good at resistance. In fact, most people have practiced resistance so much that they don't even have to think about it. They're just resisting. So when you want to change that, you have to apply yourself consciously, consistently to start to change that. You have to then actually start to slow down, just like I was describing. Become aware. Notice what's the direct experience. Notice the tension, the overthinking, all that stuff, and just start to soften. Just allow yourself to actually be here. Feel yourself here. Feel your you know feet on the ground or your butt on the chair or whatever. Feel that you are, you know, you can sense the air on your skin. Notice that there's breathing happening. Just start to become aware of that and let that start to ground you so that then you can start to consciously choose to soften some of that armoring, some of that resistance, that some of that fear. It's like, you know, if I'm not so tense and uptight, everything's going to fall apart and everything's going to go to hell. Well, as long as you keep that up, then that's what's going to keep happening in your life. But that's why you have to just, if you want changes, you have to consciously intervene and just provide that one moment, just the one moment of a little bit of softening, a little bit of presence. And if you give yourself that little moment, then you give yourself that little moment again tomorrow and then again tomorrow. And, you know, if you find that that's pleasurable, which it should be, then maybe you'd start to realize, oh, well, I can do this more often than once a day, right? I can do it twice a day, five times a day, 10 times a day, all the time. But if you just start at least with once a day, then that's doable. Make yourself a little habit tracker. Put it up on your refrigerator. Did I do it today? If not, then just like, okay, then just pause. Like you've gone to the refrigerator to get something out. Could you just pause for one second? You see how that works? You can just do that. You can start to, you can, st- so you can stack these things. Okay. So you can start to pair it with other activities that you're doing. You could remind yourself, okay, every time you get in the car, just give yourself that one moment. Just pause for one second. Every time you go into your home from being somewhere, pause for that one second. Every time that you're about to have a meal, pause for that one second. But if you at least start with once a day, that would be a good starting point. And then you can always grow it. So, you know, like I said, I know it's not flashy and sexy and and that's why most people won't do it, but that's why most people won't get the results. So if you want to distinguish yourself from most people, you know, follow through on that. So I would ask you or invite you to actually imagine yourself doing that. Uh, Because if you actually want to succeed, then you, your likelihood of succeeding increases dramatically if you can at least imagine yourself doing it. Because what happens for most people is that they hear the information and they're actually in using the power of their imagination against themselves. They're like, yeah, I wouldn't do that. That's too hard. It won't work for me. But how about this instead? Just imagine that you're that you're actually going to follow through on that. When will you do that each day? Where will you do it? What will be your reminder? You know, will brushing your teeth be your reminder? Will getting in bed be your reminder? Will walking the dog be your reminder? And then you could notice if imagining that pretty brings up some uh, sense of doubt or sense that you don't know how to do it or some or some hesitation. Now, in your imagination, allow yourself to work through that. So could you, even though there might be that doubt or that hesitation or that concern that you don't know how to do it and you might fail and you might look like a fool or whatever, are you willing to do it anyway? Because if you want to learn something, then you're you're going to have to overcome that stuff. You're going to have to work through it, right? Like anything you want to do in your life. There was a time when if you, if you, for everybody who learned to walk, there was a time when you didn't know how to walk. And if you held yourself back because you said, well, but I might fall. Oh, but I might look foolish. Oh, I might fail. Then you're not going to do it. 
same goes, same, same applies to this and everything else. So just in your imagination, this is the beauty of it is in your imagination right now, you could just work through that process that and come out on the other side, just in your imagination. So, you know, yeah, I'm going to do it. I could do that. How are you going to do that for yourself? Like I suggested, just put up a little piece of paper and track it each day. Just check it off. Did it today. Do it tomorrow. Do it the next day. If you do that, you're much more likely to succeed. But if you just, if you just say, oh, you know, I don't really need to listen to Joey. Joey's just blah, 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 blah. This is stupid. When are we going to get to the, you know, the group coaching so I can ask, ask my question? Then you're not doing yourself a favor. You're not actually going to help yourself. Whereas you could use this time right now just for one moment and just imagine how you're going to do this for yourself and then actually choose to follow through on it. And uh, then you can get the results and then you can let me know. You can report back to me next week or the week after that or the week after that about the amazing results that you're getting. I mean, because you might get amazing results in as little as a week's time. You might need to wait two weeks or three weeks or four weeks before you start seeing what you would qualify as amazing results. You will start to see amazing results as long as you follow through. And then as long as you continue to follow through, you those will grow. So I, I've just given you life-changing information. I hope that you make the best of it. And uh, for those who are here live, I'm happy to stand for your coaching. And before I do that, I want to make a few mentions for people who watch this on YouTube. Um, the first thing is, if you're interested in joining these calls live, you're welcome to do so. And you can get that information by signing up for my newsletter on my website. Talk about indirect, right? It's like the child who wants chocolate. So if you'd like to join live and you know, reasons to join live, um, because it's fun, I don't know. And also because we have group coaching that follows these talks. And so it's an awesome opportunity absolutely for free. You can ask your questions and get coached on something if you'd like, and that can change your life uh, for the better, hopefully. So you can get that information by signing up for the newsletter on my website. And then uh, the other thing is that, as I mentioned earlier, I do offer a pay program called Manifesting Truth. And I really encourage people who are interested in what it is that I share to consider signing up for that. It is, um, so I think, frankly, it's an, it's an awesome program, which is why I offer it. Um, the reason that I offer that program is because I wanted to, um, it, it solves a couple of problems that I saw. Okay. So one thing is that, uh, um, there are a lot of programs out there that, um, offer one piece of the puzzle and they present it as though that's the whole thing. And for most people, that's not true. And so I wanted to put together something that offers a comprehensive, complete program that allows people to get their results that they want in their life. That's one thing. Second thing is that um, I see that a lot of teachings are kind of, there's kind of two camps. One is that a lot of teachings are about getting worldly success. So, you know, make the money, grow, grow the business, have the house, have the spouse and all that stuff. And then another camp is um, all about so-called spiritual stuff, which is really what people are thinking about wanting to transcend, um, attachments and to get to unconditional peace and happiness. And these are presented as though they're two separate things. And that's insane. They actually go together. You're a complete being. You want all of that. You should want all of that and you can have all of that. So manifesting truth is about, um, all of that. You can have worldly success, spiritual success. You can experience all the material things that you truly desire. And you can achieve that in the context of unconditional happiness and fulfillment. So that's what the program is aimed for. Um, and what's the main, the main thing also about it is that, um, information is kind of cheap and easy. Um, of course, getting the right information, uh, not so cheap and easy, but, um, even so, even once you have the right information, a lot of people struggle to be able to make use of that right information in the best way. Of course, I present what I consider to be the right information in these YouTube talks, um, are these, are these weekly talks. Um, but putting that together and then actually, uh, put it into practicing your life in ways that work for you is where the rubber meets the road. 
And what I found is that most people benefit from getting support in that process. And so that's what I really aim to offer in the Manifesting Truth program so that you can get support. So in that program, I do offer uh, a, a lot of support, as daily support um, in the form of if you have questions or need support in anything in the process, you can post your questions and get a response, usually same day from me. And then um, the other thing is that every week we have uh, extensive group coaching sessions, which allow for everybody who uh, needs support in whatever way to get that support. So it's really unparalleled support to help you to achieve whatever your goals are in life. So I do encourage you to consider that if that sounds of interest to you and you can get more information uh, at my website, joeylott.com slash manifesting dash truth. And I'll provide the links for those things in the description on uh, YouTube. So that's all I wanted to say about that. For those, again, for those who are here live, we'll stay on for group coaching. And for those who are on YouTube, blessings to you and bye for now.